and welcome to my second video in the Leadership Speak series. In this interview, I speak with Mrs. Roshni Jaiswal, Promoter and Chief Restructuring Officer, Jagajit Industries Limited. Founded in the early 1940s, Mrs. Jaiswal has taken upon her shoulders a 76-year-old legacy created by her esteemed father and grandfather. Under her leadership, JIL is today an established name in the manufacture and marketing of alcoholic beverage and foods worldwide. Mrs. Jaiswal is a woman entrepreneur well known for her leadership qualities and business smarts. She has made her mark in a highly competitive, male-dominated industry. Her newest venture into the sanitization business is an inspiring example of achieving success by innovation. In today's chat, many topics came up, but the most interesting to me was how Mrs. Jaiswal made strategic changes to protect her business and employees during the COVID pandemic and how she converted bigger problems into bigger opportunities. So what can we learn from Mrs. Jaiswal's life as a business leader? Let's ask her and find out in the second episode of Leadership Speaks. Good evening and thank you Mr. Jaiswal for joining me. I would like to introduce to everyone that you are the promoter and chief restructuring officer at Jagajit Industries. So before I begin with the questions, would you like to say anything? No, thank you for having me here and thank you for questioning and asking these questions. I think it's, it's a really great initiative that you've actually taken. Thank you. And so my first question is that um, you went to college in the US, you did an MBA in Stern. How was that experience like? Okay, so let me just correct you. I didn't do an MBA in Stern. I did go to NYU. Um, so I was at New York University. I, I did study at Stern, but I did uh, my bachelor's at Stern. So I did economics. I was a double major in economics and political science. Wow, that double major, that must have been a lot of hard work. Somewhat. It was interesting. You have to do subjects that you really enjoy. When you do that, it doesn't feel like so much work. Of course. And did your major help you in any way in what you do today? Not at all. Oh. Not at all. <clears throat> um, I don't know. A lot of these subjects that we study, uh, whether it's liberal arts or you know, economics helps with understanding the general well-being of the economy and how things work. Did it directly help me in my business? I would say definitely not. <laughs> That's interesting. And Jagajit's industry is famous for its alcohol. However, you have diversified and started a sanitizer company called Just Human. Why did you branch out and do something completely different? Was it an opportunity or just the love for the product? Mm, so, I started my career as an entrepreneur many, many years ago in 2000. Um, and I was in the bar business that time. So I started the first lounge bar in India, um, in Bangalore. At that point in time, there were no lounge bars in India whatsoever. And I loved being an entrepreneur. And so when the pandemic struck, um, my actual motivation was that I had a workforce of 1,800 people. Uh, I knew this in early March, and I knew that they were going to shut all factories down. Uh, the company was not doing very well at that point in time. <clears throat> and my, my thought that occurred to me was, how do I pay um, wages to my workers if the factory is shut and for workers as you might know Rehan even though you're very young if these people don't get one month's salary for them and their families it means that they will have nothing to eat so my initial motivation uh, was you know to really try to safeguard my people 
my workers. And uh, when I thought about that, I said, well, the one thing I do know is that if you become an essential industry in some shape and form, the government will allow you to function. And as a distillery, being a part of alcohol, um, and you know all sanitizers have alcohol in them, uh, that, that, that sort of avenue started like that. So we said, okay, so let's start producing sanitizers because we know that sanitizers are needed. And so we became the first, uh, Jagajit became the first alcohol company in India to actually start manufacturing alcohol-based sanitizers. So the motivation was humanitarian in the sense that it was really for our workers because it kept our factory open and we were able to produce sanitizers. So we did it. Um, initially, we started selling. Uh, we actually donated to the government, government bodies. And then we started selling as well, which, was, which sort of really helped us, A, remain open. And second, we were able to make payroll to be able to pay everybody. And uh, it started off like that. And then the opportunity turned because within a month of, you know, uh, me starting this here, my I'm a member of a body called a YPO, which is um, young, Pres it's called, it stands for Young Presidents Organization. And all my YPO members from the USA started reaching out to me and asking for sanitizers. So we started, you know, supplying to the United States. And the bulk of our business, actually, the selling part of our business, actually then we did massive sales in the US. And so when we did this, we realized that there was a huge business opportunity in this segment. And, you know, it gave me um, a chance to become an entrepreneur again. So we said, let's find a better product because alcohol-based sanitizers are really limited. They don't really protect people. And so Just Human was born then. Wow, that's really interesting and that's very admirable of you to do something for your workers in times of need. And Just Human now has turned into such a big brand. And having identified a path-making product that made you look beyond the Indian market to the United States, what tools did you use to evaluate your market? So we, um, we launched in India, Just Human launched in India about uh, a month ago. Um, the metrics that we had used earlier uh, to sort of tap these two markets were two, three things. One was we looked at what is the trend in the sanitizer industry. We looked at growth metrics uh, from reports as to how much the sanitizer industry was growing between 2014 and 19. And the, 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 the ad compounded annual growth at that point in time, or what we would call the CAGR, was 14%. So that was pre-pandemic. Pre and the CAGR from 2020 to 2024 for the same industry, post-pandemic, is 62%. So that was one metric. So we knew that a lot of consumers, the human psyche had essentially changed. People, even after the pandemic, will continue to be very careful of their health and will continue to use products like this. The second metric that we used was the fact that the U.S. market, we had a whole network in the U.S. We had made and built a lot of relationships there. We knew we could sort of, you know, tap into those relationships. So that was uh, the second reason for us, the U.S. became an important market. The third was, you know, obviously my own familiarity with the United States, having lived there for many years, having worked there in the US. Um, that was the third reason. The fourth reason was it's one of the biggest markets. You know, it's got 300 million people. Uh, we knew it's a, we know also that it's a very brand conscious market. 
and that you know lifestyle products differentiated products niche products are very well received in those markets right and they have the money to be able to afford them much more so than you know countries like india do much bigger basket to play out of rather than india so uh, there were all these factors that we looked at uh before we decided that you know the us was actually uh, a good market for us whether it would be a good market for us or not definitely i think all these factors do point out to be in a good market and i think 14% to 62% is a huge jump and moving aside from business i hear that one of your passions is startup culture could you please elaborate on why you enjoy it so much um so i think startup culture is uh, also part of uh, it's it's a personality driven thing i love uh, i love learning and when you are a part of a startup it's generally learning something completely new uh, being an entrepreneur is always a to going in a direction where you know maybe nothing so you're learning you're constantly learning so one you know it sort of feeds my appetite for growth and learning um second is that you know startup culture is about solving a problem any product that you launch has to solve a problem otherwise it's not going to work so if there is a problem what you're doing is solving that problem and that way what you're doing is you're positively impacting a very large number of people you're helping people in a in, in in a way um let's put this in a different kind of way so i don't know uh you're very young now but one of the most gratifying things is when you may not physically do social work yourself but if you help people it could be so- helping someone with education it could be helping or making a difference in someone's life it gives you a great amount of you know a very good feeling it gives you because you've helped someone and that feeling is great startup culture is a bit like that because you're taking a problem and you're solving it and you're helping you could be helping hundreds of millions of people so impacting people in a very positive way for me is a big thing and um, that's also part of the reason why the you know i love technology and i love science because both avenues actually um are constantly innovating to bring better products out that make differences in people's lives definitely and you say you love technology how important is it in today's time to use technology to brand and promote your business products and which areas do you believe are the strongest for this both for the alcohol business and the sanitizer business technology is extremely important you cannot have a brand today without technology every aspect of social media is important um let's take the alcohol business the alcohol business in india is a very different market from what it is across the world it's a highly regulated market the government does not really allow you to it's media dark means people don't allow you to advertise even alcohol i can't show you a bottle of whiskey and advertise um you're not allowed to do that so in india you have to use things like you show a bottle of water and say kingfisher water or, you know and you're actually advertising kingfisher beer so it's things like that you have to do in india so i would say that you know social media even for alcohol is important but it becomes important in certain segments but you're using surrogates you're using a surrogate to promote that alcohol um because the large segment of the indian alcohol industry is also dominated uh by the lower segment and a lot of the jagajit brands are sitting in you know a price point which is you know literally 500 rupees and less you that particular part of the population isn't so much on social media they might be on youtube to some extent but they they don't have facebook they don't really have instagram they don't have twitter you know youtube is that banner so you have to see which segment you're hitting in alcohol and then you can if you had a scotch or if you had a high level vodka then you do social media but it is limited what we can do with alcohol in india on social media um with the sanitizer business of course social media um 
all our platforms are really relevant. So <clears throat> it would depend on what I'm targeting. So for example, if um, my TG or my target audience is, let's say children. So one of my target audiences in the sanitizer industry is children under the age of 12. As they resume life, um, children don't remember, their mothers can keep shouting at them, put sanitizer on, put sun, and they don't remember how to do all that. So a once a day sanitizer that you just put on once a day and send your children off to school or to play or to do whatever they want to do is peace of mind for the mother. So basis, if I'm targeting, let's say a mother, or if I'm targeting, let's say a gym goer in India, I would look at that TG and then I would use that platform which was relevant to that TG. So mine is a premium product. So I know that in India, if I'm a premium product and the sort of customers that I want, they are sitting very in a very big way on Instagram. So I would target Instagram in particular in a very big way. If, for example, my target is, my second target is people who are, you know, older, 50 years and older with comorbidities. We know the older crowd sits on Facebook. Much more relevant to them, right? So it's basis where your target is, is those are the platforms you target more strongly. It doesn't mean that you won't be on other platforms, but those become your target platforms. Right, definitely. I think technology is imperative these days and really, it really exposes your brand to everyone and shares the knowledge about your brand. And I think my last question, and I think a very important question is that, what, do you, what is your number one tip for aspiring entrepreneurs who wish to be entrepreneurs when they grow up? What is your number one tip for them? Follow your passion. If you love doing something, then follow your passion. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, then find a problem. That problem has to be personal. Find a problem in life anywhere and see how you can make it better. The moment you do that, that's your first idea and that's how you find your business. Because to be an entrepreneur, you need to find the business. What are you going to be doing? And to find that business, you've got to find a problem that you want to solve. Right, definitely. I think problem solving is a skill that all entrepreneurs should be amazing at. And I myself actually don't know what I want to do. I want to be an entrepreneur. And I think I would definitely use your advice and when I'm older, try to find a problem and find a solution. You will not, you know, uh, you won't need to find a problem. You don't actually go looking for a problem. What happens is sometimes you're just sitting around. So let me uh, just quickly tell you, when I moved back from New York, I moved to Bangalore. I didn't look for a problem. I moved to Bangalore and, you know, I'd been working in New York and I said, oh my God, what am I going to do here? And I got to Bangalore and after living the New York nightlife, you know, going to blah, bars and clubs and all of that, I got to Bangalore and I said, oh my God, there's no place to go. Where do I go if I want to really go out? And they had these sort of, they call them pubs at that point in time in Bangalore. There were dirty plastic tables and chairs like you find in, I don't know, in the Dhabas now, right? Those plastics and chairs, there were some money plants lying here and there. The music system was slightly crackling. They had a bar license with a small bar with drinks on it. That's the sort of bars that existed. And I was like, what is this? It was scary to go in there. They were dark, dingy. Didn't want to go in there. So when that first idea came, I was like, I want to create a place where I want to go. Because there's no place for people like me to really go out. There's no place for women to go out. And so that idea was just born out of a simple thing that, you know, you felt because you wanted to solve a problem for yourself at one level. So it kind of hits you in the face, right? Sometimes is what I'm saying. You don't ever say, okay, let me think of how do I now solve this? You know, it's something because it's come and hit you personally. So it's a very personal thing. Um, the journey of an entrepreneur is very, very much personal. Right, definitely. I don't think you can go searching for a problem. Not like that. No, no. 
I think it just hits you, you know. You could be doing something and you're saying, oh my God, why is this so difficult in this way? Why can't it be easier? And then you're like, okay, I can make this easier. Because you have that idea then. Right. And thank you so much for joining me and giving this amazing advice. And thank you so much. Good luck, Rehan. Thank you. And that concludes my chat with Mrs. Roshni Jaiswal, Promoter and Chief Restructuring Officer at Jagajit Industries Limited. Here are two lessons I learned from her leadership journey. First, businesses can face unexpected risks such as the COVID pandemic. The way to tackle big problems is to find strategic solutions and to have the courage to change old ways of doing business so as to adapt to a new situation. Doing this could convert our problems into new opportunities. And second, I learned how entrepreneurs can make a real difference to this world if they can build their businesses around solving everyday problems. I think that having a problem-solving mindset is a brilliant way to get fresh new business ideas and to set a path to career growth. After every chat, I will be releasing a follow-up video and blog on key takeaways and learnings from that episode. So please watch that video as well. You can share your opinions in the comment section below. This is the second in a series of my interviews with business leaders and people who have achieved success in their life. My goal here is to learn from their experience and find out choices they have made in their lives that contributed to their success. If you enjoyed watching this episode, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be releasing my next Leadership Speaks interview very soon. Till then, think positive, have big goals and focus on the road ahead.